Um, okay, so we are recording. Okay, before we begin, um, I'm just going to remind you of the normal housekeeping items. It looks like you guys are already pros, obviously, as we're six months deep into COVID. So thank you for staying on mute and uh, not having your video on. Um, we'll just wait till the end of the webinar at that point where you can ask questions and at that point you can go uh, off mute and uh, ask questions. Um, if anything happens in a technological sense throughout the webinar and it ends abruptly, please just log back into the link that we sent out to you and we'll start from where we finished um, or if something else happens, we'll send you an email with an update on what to do for the next steps. Um, all right. Okay, so to begin the officials webinar tonight, I'd like to say that we are very aware of the rising numbers of COVID-19 cases in Ontario, and we continue to take this very seriously um, as we plan ahead to the competition season. Um, and we wanted to highlight to everyone that safety is our primary, excuse me, our primary concern for everyone involved. Um, we also want to acknowledge that we appreciate and understand uh, for you as officials, unlike clubs, skaters and coaches who have been back skating for months uh, and adapting to skating under COVID, as officials for the most part, you have not been um, and you may have some concerns. We absolutely recognize this and that is why the purpose of the webinar tonight is to give you a high level overview of what the upcoming skate on events scheduled for November and December will look and feel like for you as officials and hopefully answer all your questions. A uh, quick note of clarification, um, tonight we're not going to be covering information regarding sectionals. Um, that's just a smaller group of officials, so we will do something separately for them. Tonight we're just covering uh, skate on events scheduled for November and December. Okay, so uh, before we dive into the event format overview and explain how we arrived at this particular event format for skate on events, um, I want to start off by covering the guiding principles for Skate Ontario during COVID, specifically for competitions. So the guiding principles are, number one, keeping skaters engaged. Uh, number two, providing meaningful and performance opportunities for skaters at different developmental stages within COVID-19 restrictions. Um, and then as we've further planned and designed the Skate On events, our goal for those events um, are specifically um, that you know, we want the guiding principle to be similar, um, but that these events are meant to give skaters meaningful performance opportunities as we return to skating uh, this season in Ontario. And as we've said publicly many times before, these events will look and feel different from previous Skate Ontario events um, as we've had in the past. So um, thank you again for joining the webinar tonight and I am now delighted to introduce Michelle Hunsley. Thanks, Kelsey, and hello, everyone. I'm delighted you could join us. Well, what will Skate On events look like? All Skate On events will be one pad, on-demand performance opportunities for skaters. Skaters will be on site and will skate their competition program. The tech rep and a referee will also be on site. A Skate Ontario event staff member, or the SOSPOC, will be there and host club volunteers will also be on site in a limited capacity. From the skater's perspective, it will be somewhat of a normal experience in that they will arrive, register, warm up off ice, and then compete. Major differences are that they will follow a very detailed schedule, including prescribed arrival and departure times, access to warm up area times, etc. Also different is that there will not be a large panel of officials staring at them as they take their starting position. They will not immediately hear their scores and final results will not be available until a few days after the event. Medals will be mailed to home clubs instead of being presented on, sites, on site. It will, however, be very different for judges, tech officials and data specialists who will not be in the arena. More detail to follow. But in a nutshell, the skater will skate and their video will be uploaded. The assigned tech panel will meet at a predetermined time on a Zoom call to review the program, to call the elements and levels, and to confirm if it is a well-balanced program, if that's applicable. The VRO will have the ability to make video clips and everyone will have the ability to slow down or accelerate replay. 
Essentially, the tech panel will do what they normally do when they are on the stand at ringside. Once a group is complete, judges will have access to the videos and a list of the elements to input their GOE, GOEs and program components. Judges will be given a timeline to complete their work. Data specialists will then manually input the elements, the GOEs, and the PCs to produce each scanner detail sheet and category results. There are various verification processes built into this model. What we have not yet firmly determined is a timeline for producing final results, although we realistic, realistically think three to four days after an athlete skates. This is one of the many things the pilot and the first two skate on events will address. We know we have highly qualified and dedicated officials in Ontario who will quickly adapt to this new model and who will do their utmost to do their part in a timely and an efficient manner. Okay, and I am going to turn it over to Teresa. Thank you, Michelle. Again, thank you everybody for joining us this evening. I'm just going to go over some of the technological requirements um, in regards to um, the equipment that you will be required to use for remote scoring. If you are using a PC, a minimum of Windows 10, a press processor, memory, and hard drive that meets the minimum requirements of the operating system, webcam, and that would be for the technical panel only, as well as a headset port and um, headphones with a microphone, for the technical panel only. The reason we recommend um, a headphone with a microphone is that we received um, information from Skate Canada that while they were testing their pilots, um, that there was, um, there was feedback that could be heard then from the tech panel as they are speaking, um, as well as speakers and a high speed internet connection. If you're a Mac user, Next screen. Um, then a Mac operating system 10.13 or later with a 64-bit processor. Again, for tech panel only, a webcam, headset port, um, as well as headset um, speakers and high-speed internet connection. Um, computers that don't, do not meet these requirements may support the use of the, um, the process and the tools, but we cannot guarantee that. Skate Canada does not guarantee the functionality nor the support of the use of video play and replay tool on these types of devices. And that would include, um, oh, I just slipped my mind. Um, that would include anything else um, other than a computer. Okay, thanks, Teresa. Um, next, I'm just going to cover a few important resources for you for your reference. So we wanted to highlight some important resources um, that we have published. Um, you might have had the chance to review it. Uh, and if you haven't, we highly recommend you do so. So the first, uh, the first document is the return to competition protocol uh, for skate on events. These protocols are intended to enable a safe return to competition. Uh, these protocols are designed to be executed for an on -site, from the on-site perspective. Um, these uh, protocols are aligned with our return to play protocols as well. The second resource, the competition manual, um, is our updated competition manual with, uh, as the COVID-19 edition. Uh, again, this has been updated for skate on events specifically. Uh, this manual is created as a guidebook for our LOCs, so our local organizing committees, but um, it also has some really helpful information for you as officials as well, just to reference. Um, you can find both of these documents on our website underneath the events toolkit. Um, you can see here on our website, compete, and then, and then eventually it'll, there'll be a drop down, and uh, you can go there for the events toolkit. Um, also, as you receive further training that's specialized, you will receive specific training materials. So stay tuned for that, um, for those resources.
This is you, Teresa. Yep, no, <laughs> I was talking on mute. <laughs> Although there will be no music players or announcers on site, the skate for the skate on events that happen in November and December, um, they are being supported by music and announcing, announcers by um, recruited by the LOC. Skaters will be required to upload their music using the Uplifter account that was used for registration. There are no exceptions to this process. There will be no music registration on site. There is a process in the case of music issues. Skaters are being told to bring a copy of their CD with them ringside, just in case there are music issues. Upon direction of the referee, the skater will retrieve the CD, bring to the music player. Upon completion of the program, the skater will return to the music player, receive their CD, and then skate off. I expect from remote officiating for a judge or technical official approximately one to two hours following the completion of the category the tech panel will meet at a predetermined time via zoom they will carry on like they normally would as if they were ringside once the tech panel has finished their role the timing obviously would be dependent um, based on the number of skaters the judges will receive notification that they can access their JPRs Judges will be given 24 hours to complete their portion of the process. Technical support will be available for the duration of the competition up to the release of the results. The contact information for this technical support will be communicated by the SOSTOC just prior to the event. And on to Michelle. And what should I expect from remote officiating as a DS? All skate on events will be manual input and the time commitment will be dependent on the number of registrations. DS can choose to wait until both the tech panel and the judges have completed an entire group. This would likely be at least 24 hours after a group of skaters finishes, or the DS can begin inputting elements when the, once the tech panel has completed an entire group and then go back and input judges, GOEs and PCs once they are available. Okay, so a few other items here that we felt were important that we wanted to make sure you were aware of. Um, so number one, because you will not be on site, uh, you will not be required to complete the COVID-19 waiver uh, before the competition. It's only required if an official is on site at the competition. So your gift card, so you still will be receiving a gift card for each day that you officiate. Uh, we'll be sending out the gift cards after the last event in December. So the gift cards will be sent out just before Christmas. Um, so for example, if you officiate at a competition in November and December, you would receive both, com both cards at once um, sometime after, uh, after the event in December. Um, so for expenses, as you won't be driving, so there's no need to fill out expense forms. Uh, and just to clarify, um, at this point, Skin Ontario will not be providing any equipment to officials or cover covering any uh, expenses related to remote officiating, such as computer paper, ink, et cetera, things like that. Um, next, we wanted to clarify um, the information that you will be receiving from the tech rep um, versus the SOSPOC. So from the tech rep, you will uh, continue to receive the X and O's and the event schedule, um, and you are encouraged to continue to ask them technical questions um, as you normally would. So from the SOSPOC, uh, you will receive information for the technical support. Um, so that's something that both Michelle and Teresa have talked about. Um, so you will receive that uh, person's information uh, from the SOSPOC. Um, you will also receive information regarding Zoom calls, links to SharePoint folders, timelines um, for one year marks need to be submitted, et cetera. All that stuff will come from Skate Ontario. So essentially remote uh, scoring training information and instructions on required links to get there um, to see those documents and videos, et cetera, will be from Skate Ontario. Right. So clearly turning myself on and off video is too challenging for me. But, um, I just wanted to give a brief overview of the assignment process for data specialists for skate on events. Um, just to confirm that the chief and computer DS 
for all skate on events have been assigned. And once registration closes for each event, the chief and the computer data specialist will be consulted to determine if more DS are required. And if they are required, more DS will be assigned. One of the purposes of the upcoming remote scoring pilot that we are holding and a small pilot that we held previously is to, to, to determine realistic time commitments, sorry, I can't even speak, time commitments for data specialists so, so that this can be shared with them when they are invited to assist at an event. The assignment process for judges and technical officials. Um, you may have remembered completing a, a survey a while ago. Again, we understand that um, that survey was completed with the thought that you would be traveling actually to these competitions and would be officiating on site. As we know now, the, that is not the process. We still, though, did send those survey results to the tech reps. Um, they also do have a copy of the database so that um, they can reach out to other officials as well. The tech reps for the four skate on events are going to be collaborating together so that they can um, figure out and plan on who they're going to use so that um, just try to, to reduce the, um, the overlap and um, so that we can engage and use more officials for these four events. Again, if you'd previously identified that you weren't available for any remote officiating, or if you're thinking maybe now that, you know, this may not be for you, if you're a judge and technical official, let me know. If you're a data specialist, then let Michelle know. So what about training? We've talked a little bit about training. Um, for judges and technical officials, approximately one to two weeks out from the competition, training will occur for the judges um, and technical officials, and this will be in a Zoom format. We also do have written instructions just to help you guide you through the process. Technical support, as we mentioned, will be available for the duration of the competition. And again, that information um, will come from the SOSPA. Okay, for data specialists, we will host a DS specific follow up webinar in the next couple of weeks. This will focus on the role of the DS, including the chief, the computer, and as we like to call them, the worker bees, and processes within our model of remote officiating. The webinar will be available to all interested data specialists, whether or not they are participating in any of the skate on events. Stay tuned. I guess this is still me. Well, you might be wondering why we chose this model. I think it's important for everybody to know that we have spent a significant amount of time looking at how we may best deliver competition opportunities that fit not only within public health guidelines, but that also embrace the guiding principles mentioned earlier. We have consulted with all of our stakeholders, with our national body and other sections and with other sports. We made decisions keeping the health and safety of all at the forefront. It is also extremely important to us that we adopt a model that ensures the integrity of the event. Skaters are still on site, having an on-demand performance. Tech panels are still consulting with one another with the ability to review and replay skaters' programs. Judges are still judging independently. Data specialists are still responsible for the setting up of the databases and producing results. There are still processes to ensure the accuracy of these results. We are fully aware that this is a fluid situation and that we may need to continue to evolve and make changes to our model and processes as time goes on. In the end, and after many weeks of work, we have concluded that the model we presented this evening is the best choice for skating in the province of Ontario at the current time. Back over to you, Kelsey. Thanks, Michelle. So further to what Michelle has said, you might ask, why not use live scoring like Skate Canada? 
Um, in going through the Skate Canada option where scores are given live, we really thought about you as officials and we wanted to give ourselves um, and you a buffer uh, so that we could deliver a successful and meaningful event for our skaters. We knew uh, with a new format and involving officials from all across the province, there would be the potential for different internet speeds and the possibility of troubleshooting all at the same time. So we really wanted to set up everyone for success. Um, in addition, when we were looking at the calendar and really thinking about what we could do, the first two Skate On events are running the same weekend. Um, and, you know, we acknowledge that it would have been a lot all at once for everyone involved. Uh, so as Michelle said, at this point, we are really comfortable with this approach right now, and we're excited to share it with you um, and you, you know, and share it to everyone um, as we deliver a COVID-friendly option for skaters this fall. Um, so now we are going to open it up for questions for you. So I can just answer a few of the questions that have come up on the chat screen that I did answer. Um, Laura did ask, and these were the words I couldn't think of. They were on the tip of my tongue, but um, mm -hmm. an iPad or a tablet. Um, like we mentioned in the, the uh, technological requirements, um, we're not going to say for sure that it won't work, but we just can't guarantee or, or Skate Canada can't confirm and be that these are reliable sources. So, um, like I said, that's why it is recommended to be using either a laptop, um, a Mac, or a desktop computer. Um, somebody else did ask in regards to, will we have a practice event, which is a great question. Um, so, currently what we're doing with the test event, we're doing some training. Uh, with them and then they're being given um, the link so that they can actually go in and practice and that um, is the plan that we'd like to do with all of you officials as well. Once you've done your training session, um, then we will send you the link to a folder and you can actually go through and just look at the practice, the, the process yourself, click the links and kind of work through it um, with the written instructions. Okay, and the question about um, about if we whether or not we plan to share more on verification tonight. Um, no, the simple answer is no. That will be really expanded upon in the various um, uh, follow up training and webinars. Uh, so I'll focus specifically on the verification process as it involves data specialists uh, in the webinar that I'm doing, and then Teresa will touch more on the uh, judge and tech panel and her follow-ups. Okay, and another great question. How many officials will be assigned on each panel? Will redundancy be built in in case of a power outage, computer issues, et cetera? So currently um, for the skate on events for November and December, um, we are um, planning on having one referee and having three judges. Um, in the case of the tech panel, they'll all be on the same call so that if there would be um, any issues in regards to power or computer, um, then they will all, that'll affect all of them at once. If you are a judge, like we said, you will have 24 hours. Now, again, um, 24 hours is the number right now. Um, as we go through some of these events, then, you know, we are going to evaluate that and see whether you know, we need to give a little more time or is 24 hours a, a suitable uh, range of time for judges to complete their officiating. Um, so if you are an official though and something happens and, if you are, if you are um, on a panel as a judge and if you are having issues with your computer, again, you can contact support person um, as well and let them know that you are having issues and then we can just deal with those on a case-by-case -case basis. Okay another question how does the announcer come into this model? So again like we said for the November and December events the announcer is um, being recruited by the LOC the local organizing committee so again um, just because of, of the numbers allowed um, they will be be allowed to have one announcer and one music player on site. And um, those volunteers that are um, working in an event technician capacity um, will 
uh, we're still working on some of those those processes, but um, they will just carry out their duties like they normally would, as if they were, um, as if there was a full panel there. Again, um, logistically where they are, they won't be sitting on a panel, but um, they will be close to the ringside. Uh, will calls be sent to the DIO for input after? Um, with the model that we are currently using for the November and December, um, we will not be using a DIO. We will be using a VRO only. And the TC will be, um, there is a process for the technical controller to be, um, they will upload, uh, they will input their, the elements into a, their, J, uh, their judging or technical panel sheet which will then be on the Skate Ontario SharePoint. And then that will be verified by, um, by the ATS um, that those elements that have been inputted are actually accurate. That will be the double check there. So um, Carrie's asking, you mentioned that if there's music issues, the skater will talk to the referee. Um, so yes, the referee, there will be one referee on site with the tech rep and the tech rep will be um, doing some of the roles as referees so that obviously that, that sole referee isn't going to be ringside the whole time. So at times the, uh, the tech rep will take on the duties of the referee. Okay, Teresa, I'll take the next one. Okay. Um, so Laura asks, says three judges will make it hard to get everyone active. Maybe after the first weekend, that number could be increased to five. Um, I'll just give you the rationale for currently why it's at three is, uh, I think it's important for everybody to remember that these will be totally manually inputted um, events. So on the part of the data specialist, everything is manual input. Um, and then also, so obviously that's a significant um, time commitment. Um, so we're going to keep it at three hoping to stick to that timeline that we mentioned earlier of being able to produce results within three to four days after the completion of an event. Um, it's certainly not, it's certainly something that we could consider after uh, we've got a couple of events under our belt, but at the current time it is three. So the next question, I don't know if you want to answer it, Michelle, or if you want me to answer. Well, the timing of the skates and how will that be entered into the CSS to allow calculation of bonuses? I'll let you do that one. Okay, so the referee, they will be the person on site, right? So they will be the, um, the person that will be timing. Um, and um, as well as the tech panel, um, they can be uh, watching that as well. Um, and then how will you enter that into CSS? Well, then you'll have to manually enter in um, those halfway, um, which will be identified by the technical panel. So they will identify on their sheets where the halfway is. And then, um, like I said, that'll have to be manually entered within the CSS system. So, and the VRO will not be at the rink. They will log on at the same time as the tech panel. Um, we will be having, um, JB video will be recording. They will, it will then be uploaded to a YouTube and um, the links will be shared with um, all of those that are on that panel so that they can access the uh, video replay module. So the next question, how will Skate Ontario ensure that judges get assigned to a competition during the year so that they're able to maintain their judge status validity? Do credentials still expire if a judge hasn't judged in a two year period? So, Catherine, um, that's a great question. Um, right now, we're only talking about events for November and December. We really don't know what events will look like um, for January on. More information is to come in regards to that part of the season. Um, like I said, the, the tech reps for the four Skate On events, they are working together to try to reach out to as many officials as they can so that we can have as many of you partaking in these events. Um, and I know in the past, or lots of times Skate Canada will say, like, you know, if you haven't judged it within a certain time period, you lose your credentials. However, you know what, these are different times right now. And we have to just remember and, and kind of not be so stringent on a, a two-year period, especially uh, for this season, because we can't guarantee that everybody's going to be used because we really don't know what events are going to look like 
um, January on. I hope that answers your question. Um, somebody asked if we wanted to print out our own JPRs and keep them on file for questions later. Yeah, you can do that. Um, um, if that's what you would like to do. Again, just re remembering that Skate Ontario is, um, will not be reimbursing any costs associated with that. Uh, so Lorna did, uh, thank you Lorna, for Skate On events there's no bonuses, bonuses are only for junior and senior. Um, Lisa, Ann, do you, Lisa Ann, do you want to expand on your question a little bit? You've asked scheduling and group sizes, will there be particular COVID changes? No, I was just thinking if you, you could, you know, depending on how many skaters are in a, a category, you might have eight in a, you know, a group or something. Uh, and and so is is there going to be like a specific guideline, say six or maybe five? And um, like, are they spaced like typically tech reps time things? And maybe it doesn't really matter to the rest of us because we're not even going to be there. But are they spacing things out a little bit more in okay. schedule? Sure, good question. Okay, so um, the tech reps um, are aware, or they certainly will be aware that uh, warm up groups will not consist of more than six skaters. We are building our detailed schedule that I mentioned earlier about you know, entry and departure times and stuff on, for the skaters. That is being built around warm-up groups of no more than six, um, even though uh, you know, there can be up to eight in certain categories. Um, so won't be any more than six. And as far as building in you know, specific uh, times or buffers um, into the schedule, because of COVID, that will be really facility driven and municipality driven. So if a particular facility um, requires a certain length of time for uh, cleaning and sanitizing, for example, obviously those kind of things will be built into the schedule and that will all be worked out um, between the organizing committee and the tech rep. Um, but really the only, the only thing that we're saying currently is that warm-up groups will be of no more than six skaters. Does that answer your question, Lisa? Yep, it does, thanks. You're welcome. So we do have a question, somebody asking, will officials be wearing multiple hats? You know, just like when, when you're on site, sometimes, you know, you're a judge, sometimes you can be pulled in to be the VRO or on the tech panel. Um, again, um, reiterating that the, the um, tech reps for these four skate on events. They are working to try and, and utilize and to bring in as many officials as we can. So um, I, I can only speak that we would hope that they would kind of share the wealth a little bit and that if you're going to be pulled in as a judge that that would be your sole capacity at that, um, at that event. Um, I do know today through a discussion with one tech rep she was thinking of just having, if you're coming in as a judge, that's what you stay in the same, say as tech or as VRO, just because this is something new to all of us. And she says it does take a little bit to get your head around exactly um, what you're doing. I hope that answers your question, Maggie. Um, we do have somebody who asked um, as well as, if they chose not to participate in the Skate On events, but then later on wants to be considered um, post-COVID, um, by all means, for sure. Um, we don't, uh, nobody, like we've said before, we won't uh, not consider anybody because they chose not to participate while we were in um, remote officiating mode. Is there a recommended number of skaters for each group? Um, we have not changed the, the guidelines for the numbers that um, have been used in past. So the maximum numbers um, would be 18 for each group. These are great questions. Thanks everyone. Mm -hmm. And you can also unmute your mic if you wish, if you have a question as well. Okay, it's Lorna, I have a question. Um, so it's, it's one pad for one day, but how long is the day? Because that'll determine 
how many skaters we can actually process. I can answer that one. So uh, Lorna, we're looking at a 12 hour day for the uh, skate right. events. Yeah, yeah, okay. exactly. It, it also may be more than one day, just depending on Correct. registration. Oh, okay, I guess I misunderstood that, okay. Yep, yep. Any other questions? These are great. I'll, you know, as always, you know how to get a hold of us if you have questions afterwards, but I think if that's all, um, Teresa, Michelle, any other last comments? I don't think so. I just, I'm really looking forward to our skate on events and the opportunity and excitement and a little bit of fear of trying something brand new. Um, but I, I think it's going to work really well. And, and I'm really proud that we're providing an opportunity. Hopefully things stay relatively stable, but providing an opportunity for our skaters in Ontario. Yes, absolutely. Um, excellent. All right. Well, thanks everyone for making it here this evening. As Michelle said, we're really looking forward to working with all of you in the next couple months on this and uh, you'll hear more from us shortly. Have a great evening. Thanks so much. Thank you, everybody.